Welcome to some Redneck 3D Printer Science. I started doing research because I wanted to be able to make aftermarket intakes. And the moment you start looking into anything that has to do with 3D printers and that kind of interaction with chemicals, everybody says you have to go to PETG. Now that makes sense. An intake of this nature is usually made out of PP plastic, which the PETG is in the same family. But PLA is a lot more common, easier to print, and so I wanted to see whether there really was some sort of difference between the two that was definable. So what we have here is we have one bottle with gasoline in it, we have another bottle with acetone in it. Now, we're going to fill up each one of these. We're going to cap it off. That way it can't flash off. We're going to check this at the one hour mark. We're going to check it at about the eight hour mark. And then we're going to check it at the 24 hour mark. Because I think at that point, by 24 hours, if it was going to have a blowout or something, we would know by then. Now the other thing I want to point out while we're setting this up is that the big selling point everybody seems to go after is temperature for the PETG. But really what its selling point is, is this is what is used when you're dealing with chemicals in a hospital environment. This is what you use when you're just printing out little thingies and toys and stuff like that. That's the big difference. So, without further ado, let's get these filled up. Now, one of the reasons why I chose acetone is because a lot of brake cleaners and carburetor cleaners and things like that are upwards of 60% acetone. For example, my favorite Denco is... 60% uh, acetone. So now we'll grab this, get this filled up. So we'll get that capped off right there. Uh-oh. Why is that glued to... Oh, okay. So I spilled some down the side and it glued itself to the nut. Now the other reason why I'm putting the caps on these is that I want to see if it ends up welding the plastic caps on. So as you can see the caps went on just fine. We've got a little bit of spillage there that is working its way off. Okay. We're going to let these sit about half filled with each of their items and we're going to come back and we're going to check it in one hour. I have found out that filament brand choice is a big deal with a lot of people. So I'm including all of the links for everything that I used for filament for this video. These Sidewinder X2s by Artillery are available on Amazon and Banggood.com both. I will include links for them. I also wanted to point out that with this PETG, we ended up having to do the masking tape method. Everybody online says to use blue masking tape. I didn't have it on hand, so I grabbed some old-fashioned frog tape which I've used for many, many projects over the years. And as you can see, the frog tape definitely worked. I'll also include what temperatures I found worked best for me and the fan setting. Now, the one thing I will point out is that right now I'm having some issues with fine detail. That is supposed to be my girlfriend. Doesn't quite look like it. And this is a rivet tag that I've started designing in order to be able to put on machines. My goal with this is that with custom machines, I always have custom belt sizes. So what I want to do is make a permanent tag that I can be able to put somewhere on the machine that tells me all of that information. And that's what I'm working on here. And while we're right here, I wanted to show you if we look here, 
how that is separated. Whereas right there on the painter's tape, it is perfectly fine. After doing some research and joining a couple of groups that have to do with this particular printer on Facebook, I've ended up finding out that this is a really common problem with this particular top. Apparently this top really likes the PLAs, but it doesn't seem to work very well with this particular PETG. Now we're at 99%. This is a bookmark that John and I designed earlier today, and all it is is the Tinkercad skull, um, skull turned 90 degrees. So here's a hint. If you go into Tinkercad and you import the skull, it will not allow you to change anything about the size of it or anything. But if you export it and then re-import a brand spanking new file, it will allow you to manipulate the skull and do things with it. And this is just a one millimeter thick piece of square. This is just a circular piece added on and we infilled it with half of a circle. And there is John's skull for an attempted print. So I'm interrupting all you keyboard warriors that are currently on a Google search just so that you can post something in the comments that makes you sound smart. You know who you are. The people that are commenting, well, Ford did it already back in the early 90s. Jetta did it. Um, other companies have done it. They all have plastic intake manifolds. Now, please, start doing some research on the type of plastic that they're using on those intake manifolds, and you'll understand why it is that we're looking at whether we can use this PETG. Now, this PETG does have a flaw in it. We're going to cover that in just a second. But... If you have started doing Googling on intake manifolds and stuff, what you're going to find is Ford started doing it in the 90s. And what you're going to find is they used a plastic called glass fiber reinforced polyamide. Now, what that really translates to is it is nylon plastic that is 30 to 35 percent fiberglass. You can buy it. It's about $35 a roll. That's not the problem. The problem is you have to re-outfit your entire printer to print it. Because if you've ever done sandblasting, it's the same idea, only with your 3D printer. You're going to destroy things because of the fiberglass ripping things apart in your printer. Now, I don't know how that sounds to you, but that sounds like a giant headache to put a brand spanking new printer through. Not to mention it means that I'll have to convert it to basically just print that one type of plastic. Whereas if I'm doing PETG, I can also still revert back and do PLA prints in order to do bookmarks with my son or make knobs or something like that. So... That's why we're playing with this PETG and not nylon with fiber in it. The next Google Hero thing is going to be the people that say, well, I looked up that PP plastic that you mentioned earlier in the video, and I can buy it. It shows up on Google. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can buy it. All right. About $45 a roll, and it's pretty new on the market. I've only been able to find about two people, three people that seem to actually have any real experience in printing it. And let's just say it doesn't look exactly promising. So, no, I'm not going to bother trying to go and do the PP plastic route. $45 a roll for extra cost, extra problem, extra whatever. If we manage to get to the point we are selling intake manifolds that I make or things like that, we'll look into the nylon setup, but we're not going to bother with the PP plastic. Now, with that being said, PETG is used in gas tanks, in cars. In fact, if you buy a Ford gas tank assembly, most of the time, 
that is made out of PETG plastic. The reason being is because they are attempting to use plastics that are more likely to be recyclable, and nylon plastic does not recycle very well, and PP plastic does not recycle very well, so manufacturers are using PETG whenever possible. But, let's see if we can catch this. This is gas in PETG. Can you see that reflection? That reflection is not the plastic. That reflection is gas wicking. So, the problem with PETG is that it reacts with certain chemicals, and gasoline happens to be one of them. And if in contact with gasoline, it will actually wick it, the same kind of idea as a candle or an old oil lamp or something like that. We're at the 24 hour mark and I've got pliers and I've got cutters because at this point we don't care if we destroy things. We want to find out what happened on the inside of these. This is PLA, acetone inside, and as you can see it has warped the lid, it has warped the bottom, and this entire thing, oh, it just popped. That entire side has been eaten out of it, right there. Yeah, it's just rubber. I can move it, it's all rubber. That's done for. The interesting note is, it didn't really smooth the inside. I can still see all the printing lines. So there's acetone. Here's gasoline. Now, previously, this would open at the 8-hour mark. It still opens. Alright, so the gasoline did not react with it as much. We can see the gasoline is still in it. Now, out of curiosity, if I can I get this back on? Yep, hasn't warped. And this is still... Yeah, that's still very solid. There's no anything about that. That's all nice and solid. So let's put some pliers on it and see how much it takes to crack it. Ready? That's a decent amount of force. There it goes. Hi. Right. So that took quite a bit to crack it. That still had most of its integrity. It didn't eat any of the inside. You can still see all the lines and everything. It's not smoothed out from being eaten away. And that cracked really hard and clean. So that was still holding even with the gasoline. Okay, so PETG gasoline. As you can see, it is shiny all the way around it. We already covered why that is. See, the lid is nice and dry. But the outside here is all wet because it wicked every bit of gasoline out of it. There's, yep, a tiny little bit maybe. Oh, one drop. We got a grand total of one drop wicked out of it. Now, let's see what it takes to crack this thing. We'll put the cap back on it to make it strong like the other one. And put it in there. About center. Now, PETG is supposed to be stronger than PLA in the long term. Uh, yeah. Oop, oh, there we go. Yeah, you can still see the lines showing up. And the inside, definitely, I can feel all the ridges still. So it didn't end up cleaning up any of the lines, so it didn't eat the plastic away on the inside. It just wicked all the gas out. And this one here, PETG with acetone. Let's see if it'll open. Yep, it opens just fine. It's making a weird rubbery noise. Oh yeah, it's starting to give. 
I can squish it and it's not as rubbery as this one was, but I bet if I gave it one more day, I bet it probably would be just as rubbery. Okay, you guys ready? Squish. Yep. It's all just rubber. Uh, let me see if I can deliberately break it in half now. Yeah, it's, it's just rubber. I, I can't even get it to... Oh, look at that. Yeah, it ate it. So, we were expecting acetone to eat it. But it's interesting that these two reacted differently. This became brittle because of the acetone. And this just became rubber. Well, I know that's not the most fancy test in the world. We've also got this right here. This is PET, and the acetone one is turning to rubber. It's all squishy, and the gasoline is still solid. So, do I think we can make intake manifolds out of PETG that'll survive for what we want to do? Yes. Do I think if it does not have to come in contact with gasoline, we could use PLA? Probably. Thanks for supporting the channel. I hope this helped you. There'll be plenty of info in the description.